welcome to kick off just about an hour to our north. Bucks fans are descending on Raymond James Stadium tonight. Tampa Bay, of course, taking on the Cowboys. And what a game it promises to be. Good evening, everyone. I'm Narisa Lamison. Yeah, Narisa, I cannot wait. I'm Rick Adams. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Monday night. And take a look. Crews performing last-minute preparations inside Ray J. This is video from just a couple of moments ago. We will be watching the game right here on ABC Channel 7. But first, ABC's Rena Roy reports why the game is a must-win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The GOAT versus America's team. The 8 and 9 Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting the 12 and 5 Dallas Cowboys in the first round of the playoffs. Legendary quarterback Tom Brady coming off a losing season gets another shot at glory. His 35 playoff wins and 7 Super Bowl titles, the most of any player in league history. Facing a team he's never lost to, a perfect 7 and 0 oh in his career. They have a great team. I've played them, you know, quite a bit over the years and um, I have a lot of respect for the organization, their history, there are a lot of great players. The Cowboys have struggled in the playoffs since their Super Bowl run in the 90s, including last year's disappointing first round loss to the 49ers. Knowing that feeling is, is enough to motivate us to, to go out there and get a win this weekend. And no one's trying to go home in the wild, wild card round. The key to the game will be the Cowboys defense putting pressure on Brady. The pressure Getting to him is going to be crucial, vital for us to win this game. He understands situational football to the highest level. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott will also need to step up his game. We're all judged off of wins and wins in the playoffs, and uh, these matter, and I know that. The Cowboys fully aware of the challenge they face stopping Brady. We're all excited about this opportunity to compete against Tom, the most decorated player of our generation, maybe even the history of the National Football League. There's no one like him in the game. Brady remaining focused on this game with his future in the NFL uncertain. You know, hopefully all the preparation has got us to this point and we're, you know, prepared for what we're about to face. A very, very tough, hard-nosed team that plays well. It's been good for a long time and we're going to have to go play well. Rena. Yeah, you better, Brady, Oof, right? That's <laughs> right. You know. um, and we want to bring in our, our Buck super fan right here. She wants pizza because she's yes. into this game. First of all, right. meteorologist Leslie Lacey. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. So the GOAT tonight, so I've been a fan since 2001, and I'm from Tampa, so I love the Bucks. And I tell you what, folks, I'm going to talk about the forecast. So in case you are headed to the game tonight, uh, we're actually going to take a look at what's going on here. And it looks like we're going to have a pretty good uh, situation here. Uh, we got a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we're going to try to get there. There we go. And who's that? Who's that? That's Brady throwing a Mike Evans touchdown. That's what we're hoping to see tonight. Plenty of it as the Buccaneers take on the Cowboys in the final wild card game. Now, the kickoff is going to be at 815. So if you are heading out there, here's the situation. You're looking at 55 degrees at Raymond James Stadium at the kickoff and clear skies. Now by halftime, it's going to drop down to 49. By the end of the game, you're probably looking at about 46 uh, degrees out there. So you want to bundle up, but fortunately, the wind's only going to be two miles per hour, so you're not going to have any kind of an excessive wind chill or anything like that, even if you are on the 300 level. So just bundle up, enjoy. It should be a great game. Let's talk about the temperatures around the Suncoast area right now. All right, so we are at 59 Wachula. We're a little bit warmer in our inland area, 60 in Arcadia. And then as we move to the coast here, oh, we're in the mid 50s, 55 Sarasota, 57 Venice, 53 Inglewood and 55 over in Bradenton. Cool water temperature out in the Gulf at 62. Let's talk about tomorrow morning's temperatures. If you woke up this morning around 7 a.m., uh, you know it was quite cold. Some of the areas were even in the 30s. We had a frost advisory in effect. And as we're waking up tomorrow morning, it's going to be a little bit warmer. 43 Northport, 46 in Venice, 44 Sarasota. So a little bit warmer tomorrow morning. And then we're actually going to reach the 70s tomorrow. Bye. Back to you, Rick. Okay, thanks a lot. The missing Manatee County teacher, Justin Dar, was found dead early Sunday morning. That was early yesterday morning. Tonight, Dar's family and neighbors are grieving his loss. Our Michaela Redmond was at Gilbert McNeil Elementary School where Dar had worked and she gives us the latest. Just behind me here, Dar is leaving behind students and co-workers. Neighbors of his that I spoke with describe him as an amazing man and say the school grounds were not the only place he would interact with children. 
Neighbors say Dar would play with kids out and about in the neighborhood, and you could always catch him riding around on a skateboard. Tonight, this quiet neighborhood is trying to figure out what happened to Dar. One of those seeking answers is John Metris, who frequently rides around the neighborhood on his bike. He says Dar would always say hello to him, and the loss of life so close to home is heartbreaking. It's, it's very tragic. I mean, you know, a lot of us are parents, too. We have children that are that age, so it's very uh, worrisome and disheartening for people. And, and adults as well, because he was an adult, he wasn't a child. But uh, it's, it's tough for, you know, someone you know personally. The investigation is ongoing, and we don't yet know what caused Dar's death. But the Manatee County Sheriff's Office says there is no threat to the neighborhood. Reporting in Lakewood Ranch, Michaela Redman, ABC7, your local station. Thank you, Michaela. In Sarasota County, the schools still need an interim su school, school superintendent. The first school board meeting of the year happens tomorrow. And you may remember last year when the school district parted ways with former superintendent Dr. Brennan Asplin. Some believing that move was politically motivated. Chris Renault is serving as acting superintendent until that interim superintendent is appointed. Now, tomorrow night's meeting is set to begin at 6 at the Sarasota County School Board. The agenda, agenda mentions the school board must appoint an interim superintendent and that's until the next superintendent has been selected and under contract the board will discuss and determine salary as well of course we will keep you updated on the developments both on air and online at mysuncoast.com and happening today in Sarasota, the city, remembering one of history's most influential figures, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the Sarasota MLK Celebration Committee, hosting the 2023 Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Breakfast. It sure was an impactful morning, as you can imagine, for those who attended this event. For sure. And right after the breakfast, people took part in a unity walk, which ended at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Park. Our uh, ABC 7's Jace Harper was at the event and was able to talk with a couple of those leaders in our community to find out why Dr. King's message is so important. Because my friends, the work of justice, it's family business. All right, all right, baby. All right. Strong words from Rabbi Michael Sheffrin as he talks about raising children to love everyone, regardless of race, sexual orientation, or beliefs. It's an opportunity to bring people together of like mind. Jetson Grimes uh, you know, speaks about the necessity the for there to be unity among the community. He says, with so much polarization, we should learn from Dr. King by coming together to promote positivity and love. You know, bringing the Hispanic community, the Jewish community, the gay community, the black community all together and to walk in solidarity and unity for the betterment of all of us. Live right, work within. Reverend Willie Charles Shaw shares how many people can emulate the teachings of Dr. King and how to honor him. Listening to and not act. When we listen to, we hear what's being said. When we listen at, we hear what we want. Let's listen to each other. And you will not want to miss this. The Ringling Bridge right about now is all lit up. So all you have to do is drive down downtown and see it. The Ringling Bridge is lit up red, white, and blue. And this, of course, in recognition of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The lights turned on 30 minutes after sunset. It's going to be turned off until 30 minutes before sunrise. And coming up. Two ABC7 members receiving honor and awards at the 42nd Annual MLK Memorial Breakfast. We want to recognize them, want to give them props, a live look of those who are honored from our ABC7 family and others in just a moment. Stay tuned. The seven-day weather forecast is brought to you by the Gettle Automotive Group. Gettle's got it. Make your home better than new with ArmorView. Call or visit today and take advantage of ArmorView's all-in pricing that includes installation, no hidden fees, and a lifetime warranty. Trust the experts at ArmorView, the clearly stronger choice for you. Hey, hon, the toilet's not working. I'll call ABC. Great, so it's done. ABC has the expertise to do the job once and do it right. Trust ABC and consider it done. This is the new 2023 Nissan Altima. With premium styling and the most tech advanced engine in its class. You can pack more action 
into every drive and leave basic behind. The new Nissan Altima. Anything but basic. Get a low 239 per month lease or get 2.59% financing for 36 months on Altima. Hurricane Ian caused massive physical destruction, but the mental health and substance misuse damage is harder to see. We can all help prevent suicide. Call or text 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Why is just a starting line for the true self blooms only when we find our purpose? What makes us tick below the surface? Why is the before work hustle an after school home, a section of my block, a corner to call my own? With my why, I stand strong, seen and supported all along. It's a million faces in a mirror and everyone belongs. Join today. Find your why for a better us. That's insane. Two 10 minute pizzas with Jeff Morrow plus eggplant patties. Next straight job. Tomorrow at three on ABC7. Make your home better than new with ArmorView. Call or visit today and take advantage of ArmorView's best offers, like our buy two, get one free deal on all ArmorView windows and doors. Trust the experts at ArmorView, the clearly stronger choice for you. Now with so much on the line, more Americans are turning to David Muir and ABC's World News Tonight than any other newscast across all of television. A slip and fall can happen when you least expect it. I'm Ellie Anajar from the law offices of Anajar and Levine, and we know firsthand how a slip and fall accident can make you feel lost, leaving you with injuries, medical bills, and even the inability to work. That's why at Anajar and Levine, we're with you every step of the way, helping you get the best compensation possible. Call us at 1-800-747-FREE for a consultation and take back control of your life. And big news today for a couple of our own folks here at ABC7. The two being honored at the 42nd Annual MLK Memorial Breakfast. Our reporter and weekend evening anchor James Hill getting a prestigious honor. And along with James, Renee James Gilmore, host of You Know Empowering Voices, both received this award. Very proud of them. That's amazing. They are representing and we are very proud of them. So we want to congratulate them for this huge honor on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we actually have James, James Hill on the phone tonight. Hey, award winner. What's going on, James? Hey, how's it, how's it going? Yeah, yeah very uh, humbling, very exciting. Uh, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. You know, I hold this award with high regard. Uh, what a great man, Dr. King. You know, to have your name on an award with his name on it is special. And I really appreciate the honor. And, you know, as journalists, we get out and we get stories and try to provide people with the latest and best information as possible. And to be appreciated for people to confirm that, you know, they see what you do and they appreciate what we do here at ABC7 is so special. And to be there today with Renee and our team, uh, we had six people from the station there. Uh, just to be there among everybody in the community was really special. And again, you know, we think about Dr. King's impact and what he has meant to society, the USA, and even globally. Uh, his concepts and his perspectives in terms of love for all mankind, loving all human beings, all creeds, nationalities, colors, denominations. It doesn't matter if you're a person, then Dr. King, you know, is pulling for you. So it's just an honor, again, to be associated with this kind of award, uh, truly humbling, and it, it was a great day. After the event was over, I did have an opportunity to walk uh, in the march and walk all the way, march all the way to the park. And so that provided more perspective as to what it's like to get out there and be part of a movement of people, if you will, who are walking in unison, chanting, and really just enjoying some of the good bands and the music and the people that were out today. What a phenomenal day, and I will always uh, remember this day. 
Yeah, and we're so proud of you, James. Thanks so much, and uh, congratulations. An honor well deserved. And uh, after the break, we are taking a look at the fun going on over at the Manatee County Fairgrounds. Details in just a moment. Days before disruptive weather hits the Sun Coast, the ABC7 First Alert weather team is on it. We're on it. When it matters to you. Broadway wishes granted at Disney's Aladdin. Audiences and critics agree it's exactly what you wish for. Don't miss Aladdin, the hit Broadway musical. At the Van Wazel, January 24th through January 29th. For tickets, visit vanwazel.org. My role as a house calls nurse practitioner is to meet people in their homes for annual wellness visits. We meet patients wherever they live. I'm able to put out fires before they ever start. I get to spend an hour with them. I'm there to treat and monitor the whole patient, their medical needs, their social needs, and of course, behavioral health needs. Making a difference for patients is what motivates me every day. Let's go! It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai Let's SUV. Go. Lease a Tucson for $299 a month or get 2.9% APR for 60 months or $750 bonus cash. See your local Hyundai dealer. Accurate, reliable, consistent. Forecast powered by the most advanced technology in our area. ABC7 First Alert Weather, Titan Radar. Sponsored by Tri-County Air. Tri-County cares about keeping your air conditioner working. Absolutely, but we also care about you. Tri-County cares about keeping you comfortable. Indeed, but we also care about you. Do you want to work with an air conditioning company that cares about you? No matter what the weather, Tri-County makes it better. Welcome to Sarasota Glass and Mirror. Our WindGuard impact-resistant windows from PGT meet the most stringent code requirements for hurricane force winds and flying debris. Also offering security against intruders, noise reduction, and UV protection. Our frameless showers are modern, elegant, and built to last a lifetime. Looking to add style and luxury to your home? Make a statement with our beautiful and decorative door inserts. Sarasota Glass and Mirror, serving our neighbors since 1974. Your Broadway wishes granted at Disney's Aladdin. Audiences and critics agree it's exactly what you wish for. Don't miss Aladdin, the hit Broadway musical. At the Van Wazel, January 24th through January 29th. For tickets, visit vanwazel.org. Welcome back. Great to have you back here. The Manatee County Fair is happening every single day this week, and it is a great day to get out and enjoy some fair rides and all of that delicious food. Our ABC 7's Holly Harper was out there earlier today enjoying this event. Take a listen to her as she eats some pickled pizza on top of a Ferris wheel. All right, when you think of the fair, you think of the food, you think of the rides. We are doing both of those today at the Manatee County Fair. I'm with Daniel the studio. And talk to me a little bit about the fair and what people can experience when they come out. A great time. They can experience a wonderful time. We have uh, wonderful fair food, lots and lots of fair food, a, a ton of entertainment, youth livestock shows daily. Uh, and we can just come out and have a good time. And uh, we think you'll agree, what a sight to see in 2023, the Manatee County Fair. Oh, that's cute. I love that little thing. And obviously, what a sight to see as we're taking a ride on the Ferris wheel. We have to talk about the food we have. Tell me where our food is from. And you can get this when you come out to the Manatee County Fair. Uh, our funnel cake today is from Ross Concessions. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, and then also our pizza is from Spaghetti Inn. This is, our, this is his new uh, pizza they came out with this year. It's called uh, Pickle Pizza. Yes. And that is very good as well. All right. Well, before we let you go, we're going to take a little bite. Give us your review of the funnel cake. I'm trying the pickled pizza. What a fun combination that is. Absolutely. you got to come out and try the fair food here. And tell me about the date that it's running. We're, we're on, we go through next Sunday, which is January 22nd. Uh, you can go to our website, 
uh, manateecountyfair.com. We have our daily schedule on there and all our pricing and gate admissions in all of our hours. Lots of fun. All right. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Reporting live from the Manatee County Fair, I'm Holly Harper for your local station, ABC7. Investigated and found the, uh, I've never heard of pickled pizza. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, well, definitely not pickled pizza. Oh, yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah, you know, a lot of fried stuff at the, at the fair, right? Like fried, fried Oreo. Twinkies, fried, Oreo. fried Oreos. Butter, fried butter. Oh yeah, that's that's a little too much, but yeah, usually it's cinnamony, but it's still a little <laughs> odd. I, I think all of us should try out that fried uh, or not the uh, pickled, pickled pizza. pizza. Yeah. Pickled pizza. We, that's we have different. To try that out. It's new. For the right? game, right? We yes. To bring some back so you can have your pizza for that's right. Your boyfriend Brady. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> In my dreams. <laughs> well, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna take it to the Cowboys tonight. Uh, the weather's gonna be pretty good for that game. Let's go ahead. Up, up, here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at those temperatures right now because um, we're going to be in the 50s in general and actually the kickoff is going to be in the 50s as well. We're going to have clear skies and in the Sun Coast area we're in the 50s. 55 here in Mayaka City, 54 in Sarasota and just about mid 50s everywhere. I just want you to look at the temperature change because this time yesterday uh, I just want you to know we are actually a little bit warmer. Five degrees warmer Sarasota. So uh, two degrees warmer here in Northport and six degrees warmer in Wachula. So we're on the rise for the most part and we're going to see that continue as we move through the week. It is going to continue to get warmer and warmer. So that's some good news ahead of us. Uh, look at Maine right here, really getting pummeled with a lot of snow. Winter warning over there. Now we do have this big line of showers here that's coming through uh, this just past the central part of the U.S. and stretching all the way actually from Louisiana up through Tennessee, really getting pummeled with a lot of rain all the way up through the Great Lakes. Now we are going to have some fronts that break off and come away from that, but that's not going to happen until later in the week. Let's like take a look at the cumulus kitty windowsill forecast as we move through the evening, folks. We're actually going to get down into the 40s, and we would like to thank Holly Thibodeau. I hope I pronounced that right, Holly, for sending in this really cute picture of Hookie, who loves to watch uh, the weather and uh, outside of the window. So thank you for sending that in in Sarasota. Our overnight low is actually going to be 44 this evening, and look at that, 70 at 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but it much better than it was this morning, because this morning we had certain areas that were actually under frost advisories anywhere east of I-75. We're not looking at that as we wake up tomorrow morning. It is going to be warmer, and then we'll push up. We'll be in the 60s, actually, by 10 a.m. So we move up the temperature scale pretty quickly, and then we're going to be at 70 by 2 o'clock, 71 now, the high tomorrow, and plenty of sunshine in store for you. And then we'll start to dip back down into the 60s uh, later on, say around 8 p.m. And even if you're going to have some outdoor dinner, you might want to bring a sweater or a jacket. Your beach and boating forecast, we do have uh, some moderate red tide in some of the areas uh, at the beaches. It's going to be chilly, of course, because of the wind and then when the temperatures are in the 60s. But we will have a lot of sunshine, so if you kind of like it kind of cool, it might be a nice day for you. If you're going to take the boat out, winds are going to be out of the south, so they have now turned coming from the south, so that will ease uh, the temperatures and not bring in such uh, cold weather that we've had. But the seas will be about one foot with a light chop, and then Wednesday, moderate chop as well as Thursday. And the, the, the seas actually pick up to two feet on Wednesdays and then about two to three on Thursday, and the winds will stay in that range of five to ten miles per hour. So uh, again, just keep in uh, the wind and keep in mind about the wind chill on the boat. That's what you need to remember. All right, let's take a look at the European model. You can see we are going to have this front that comes in. It's pretty weak and this is a uh, Thursday night into Friday morning that increases our rain chance a little bit better here. And you can see on Monday, we're definitely going to have some of that come in your highs tomorrow. Who gets the coldest area? It's going to be Bismarck at 20 Miami at 77 seven day forecast showing we're going to be in the seven. 70s, folks, and look at this Thursday, we're up to 77. So tomorrow morning, it'll be a little bit cold, but look, the rain chance is not till Friday, really. Back to you. The martial art jujitsu is now a thing with the Sarasota Police Department. Thanks to the Sarasota Police Foundation, working with Gustavo Machado, BJJ Martial Arts School, the officers are attending classes for free. As you can see, the idea of adding the training started two years ago with a couple of officers who started researching jiu-jitsu training at other departments. ABC 7's Michaela Redmond explains how the training is more than just a martial art. It's a way of life. The art of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is more than just fighting an opponent. It's about mental strength. 
at the Gustavo Machado BJJ right in the heart of Sarasota. Sarasota police officers are learning Carlos Gracie Sr.'s 12 commandments of jiu-jitsu. The first is be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. An art like this can be difficult to master. The goal is simple, taking someone to the ground, controlling them, and using the least amount of energy. If you think of that in the law enforcement realm, we're always telling these people, get on the ground, get on the ground, but you know, what happens when we get on the ground? Like, shouldn't we know what we're doing once they're on the ground and do that with the least amount of energy as possible? Burning through energy too fast can lead to mistakes. Officer Nelson says when it comes to law enforcement, officers feeling fatigued after taking someone to the ground start doing things they shouldn't be doing. They start going to uh, tools on their belt. You see, you know, it just doesn't, it's not necessary if you're able to do this stuff. And if we're training this two, three times a, uh, a week with these professionals, uh, it's, you know, we're, we're learning how to be better protecting ourselves, preventing injuries from ourselves and the people that we're trying to um, take to the ground. These officers are jumping in to learn side-by-side -side everyday residents from the Sun Coast. And these residents are from all walks of life. One is a chef and another a businessman. For Adam Witzel, he's only been in Sarasota for a couple of years now and says this is a perfect way for SPD to build relationships with the community. You're starting to build relationships in the community. So it's great to have them here. Like I, I see them driving around. I see Jake on the street. It's really nice to like, like embed yourself, start to build a really strong foundation in the community. Building strong relationships that Sergeant Jamie Morrison says is also helping open her eyes. Officers need as many tools in their toolbox as possible, including jujitsu. You learn that other people on the road that don't necessarily aren't in law enforcement, they have just as much, if not more, training than some law enforcement. And that's important because if we have to go take them into custody and they know more than we do, that's going to be a problem and it's going to be a lot harder for us to take somebody into custody. The last commandment these students are learning is believe strongly that the world is on your side as long as you stay loyal to the best version of yourself. And officers and residents alike are certainly leaving these classes a better version of themselves than before. Reporting in the studio, Michaela Redman, ABC7, your local station. And Narisa, what a great thing they're doing there. Yeah, and it, it's good. It's actually very, a lot of people are doing jujitsu. I know it's very popular even with kids. It's a great uh, self-defense and I Self look at that exercise uh, and place healthy. Yeah, I look look at that. I feel like I'm gonna pull a muscle or something. <laughs> but I, important stuff, though. I don't know if I want to be thrown around, but for some people, it's amazing, and I think for the Sarasota Police, very cool. Kudos, kudos, and we'll be right back with more news after this. C7, serving Sarasota and the entire Sun Coast. Ring in the new year with a new energy efficient heating and cooling system from Unique Services. Celebrate with no payments and no interest on your new HVAC system for six months, plus additional savings from possible tax credits. Call 941 500 9819 to schedule your appointment. Hello, I'm Wendy Ross with ABC 7's Sun Coast Health Experts, and we know that keeping your family healthy is a priority for you. So we've gathered a variety of healthcare experts across the Sun Coast to help guide you in that process. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Stolarski. And tell me, is a joint elective? So total joint replacement. You hear, you hear the word elective yeah. a lot now because of what's happening. Not really. People are having trouble. When they come to have a joint replacement, they're having trouble with what's called your activities of daily living. They can't walk, they can't get to the bathroom, they can't pick up their grandchildren. We don't consider elective. This is unlike a hair transplant or eyelid surgery. This is done for pain. So elective is a bad choice of words. And tell me about COVID. How has that affected your practice? That really is what helped me identify that these are not elective. We had to cancel over 300 cases because of the hospital status and the people that were ill in the hospital of COVID. Well, it really came to, to present itself that these people were suffering. They were called daily, and now we're back. We're, we're opening up the ORs again to elective surgery, and people are getting rid of their pain. We're moving forward, thank God. Thank you, Dr. Stolarski. For more information, you can visit kwoc.net or visit mysuncoast.com slash health experts. 
this year. Say yes. I couldn't be more thrilled with my results. I'm over the moon happy. Look at that waist. Yes to confidence. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. Yes to a new shape. These are my results. I am so happy. Yes to a new you. I'm Dr. Elena Vega. Imagine you could remove this much fat from multiple areas all at one time. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good. I have the flattest tummy that I've had in 25 years. I'm able to wear things that I never thought I would wear again. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. Find out how you can get $250 off with our New Year exclusive offer. Call 1-888-818-1474 or go to sonobello.com. Hi, it's Randy, Georgia Carbon Floors, and I'm excited to tell you we have moved. And it took a lot more than just fancy flying. Our new showroom has the top selection of waterproof vinyl plank. We have the latest styles and fashion and the top selection of unique designer tile. Still the top inventory available for next day installation and top prices too. Just land in Rice's Appliances parking lot, taxi on back and show me the way home, honey. Roger that. Meet you at the back gate. A breakdown in one of your home systems can occur suddenly. Call today and Unique Services will take $50 off any heating, cooling, or plumbing system repair over $200. Get fast relief and guaranteed service from the pros at Unique Services. Call 941-500-9819 to schedule your appointment. Welcome back. Now to the latest details on the war in Ukraine days after Russia's deadly strike on an apartment building in southeastern Ukraine. The search for survivors continues. Kiev says at least 40 people were killed in that attack. Dozens of others may still be trapped under the rubble. Fred Platekin reports on this. The morning brings to light the full extent of the destruction. The residential building, home to dozens of families, annihilated down to the foundation. Even though rescue crews still work, the chances of finding survivors now virtually zero. All night, residents watched in fear, anger, and grief. Olha Nevenchanaya says she passed by the building only about half an hour before it was hit. There are many friends and people close to me here. Many, many, she says. Olena Loyan, stunned by the scale of the destruction, curses the Russians. I simply hate them. Children, people died here, and then she can't speak anymore. Throughout the night, the death toll continued to jump. On top of the many killed, Ukrainian authorities say dozens were injured, many of them children. In just this location in Dnipro, one of many sites in Ukraine, Russia targeted with barrages of missiles this weekend. The Ukrainians say the reason why the damage here is so extensive is that this building was hit with a cruise missile called the KH-22. That's designed to destroy aircraft carrier strike groups. And obviously, when it hit the building, it completely annihilated it, burying dozens of people underneath. The Ukrainians call the attack state terrorism. And the president says rescuers will continue to try and save anyone trapped here. Let's fight for every person, President Zelensky says. The rescue operation will last as long as there is even the slightest chance to save a life. But even the slightest hope has now all but died, and this is essentially a recovery operation. The crews searching for bodies where so many lives were violently ended in an instant. Fred Pleiken, Dnipro, Ukraine. And officials say both black boxes have now been recovered and are in good condition. The Yeti Airlines passenger jet was carrying 72 people from the capital of Nepal to a popular tourist destination in what should have been just a 25-minute flight. Here is the latest on this story. Authorities in Nepal say they've recovered both black boxes from the deadly Yeti Airlines plane crash and that they're in good condition. Investigators hoping the flight data and cockpit voice recorders can provide vital clues into what caused this passenger jet to go down. The police, the armed police, the military, and the Red Crosses and all agencies are involved in rescue and search operations. 
This video showing the plane heading to the popular tourist town of Pokhara, taking a sharp left turn before crashing into a gorge. 68 of the 72 people on board killed on what was supposed to be a short 25-minute flight. Officials telling ABC News they've given up hope of finding the other four alive. Transporting the terrain is very difficult and it's very difficult to get all those dead bodies out from the crash sites and crash areas. Among the recovered bodies, most were Nepalese. 15 were foreign nationals, including passengers from India, Russia, and South Korea. Four crew members were also on board. At the hospital, family and friends of the victims. Grieving and growing more frustrated, waiting to bury their loved ones. What may be a factor here is the high altitude and airspeed control, but it's really too early to say at this point. Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains with a history of air crashes. Some aviation experts pointing to how Nepalese airlines are banned from flying in the EU due to their low aviation standards. Nepalese airlines have a very poor safety record. And here you have a flight on a perfectly clear day on final approach that for some reason seems to have stalled, flipped over on its back and impacted the ground. Today, Yeti Airlines grounded all scheduled flights in mourning for the passengers who lost their lives. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And in the U.S., another plane incident and close call. Two planes full of passengers nearly collided on the runway at New York's JFK Airport, causing one plane to abort takeoff while traveling more than 100 miles per hour. ABC's Rena Roy has this story. With seconds to spare, an air traffic controller sounding the alarm to avoid what could have been the worst aviation disaster in U.S. history. Delta 1943, cancel takeoff plans. Two planes nearly colliding at New York's JFK airport over the weekend. The close call happening as Delta Flight 1943 bound for the Dominican Republic was taking off. American Airlines Flight 106 headed to London, apparently on the wrong runway, crossing in front of the Delta jet, according to the FAA. The Delta pilots slamming on the brakes, believed to be traveling at 115 miles per hour when it came to that sudden stop. All right, then. Uh, 151 passengers and crew on board. All of a sudden, there was a noise. Uh, the brakes were activated. All the passengers were thrust forward. The Delta plane stopping just a thousand feet from the other aircraft. Experts say the Delta Boeing 737 has a slower takeoff roll than other jets to get airborne. If it was any other plane, this could have been a much different outcome. The 737-900, the Delta was operating, is a smaller aircraft. So it didn't need the full acceleration at that point. The FAA has already launched an investigation. The NTSB planning to do the same. Human error was involved. So the real key here now is to find out by whom, what were the circumstances, but most importantly, finding ways to put procedures in place to make sure that it never happens again. American Airlines declined to comment, deferring to the FAA. Delta responding, saying in part, the safety of our customers and crew is always Delta's number one priority. We apologize to our customers for the inconvenience and delay of their travels. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And more airline stuff for you right now. The FAA meltdown that led to the first full ground stop of U.S. air travel since September 11, 2001. Now has lawmakers demanding some answers. And it comes on the heels of the Southwest Airlines disruption that thwarted holiday travel for thousands of passengers. What's going on with U.S. air travel and can passengers trust an itinerary to go from point A to point B? Karen Kafa has the latest from Washington. Dozens of lawmakers on both sides of the aisle demanding more answers in a letter to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg on Friday concerned the FAA technology issues that led to the disruption of thousands of U.S. flights last week could run deeper. We've been able to uh, make some major gains in terms of accountability for airlines uh, when it comes to their customer service. We equally have to make sure that FAA has the systems, the staffing, uh, and the operations that it needs. The FAA meltdown on the heels of the Southwest Airlines holiday debacle that canceled thousands of flights. Despite the recent headlines, Katie Nastro, travel expert for Going, says the majority of flights are getting from point A to point B on time. The passengers can prepare to be their own troubleshooters. Sometimes things happen, you know, having that flexibility and just being prepared with a backup plan is never a bad idea. That begins with reading the fine print on a ticket. There are controllable disruptions. That's things within the airline's control that they can manage, like a staffing issue, like a software issue internally. 
And then there are uncontrollables like the weather and air traffic control, which is an entirely other separate entity from airlines. That distinction will determine your compensation from an airline. Nastro also recommends non-stop flights to reduce the chance of disruption and early morning flights to avoid the domino effect of disruptions to a flight schedule like the FAA stop last week. In Washington, I'm Karen Capa. And now to the latest on the investigation into President Biden's handling of classified documents over the weekend. Lawyers for the president revealing that five more classified files were found in his Delaware home last week. And as Republicans demand to learn who may have had access to those restricted government papers, the White House counsel came out to say visitor logs likely don't exist for Biden's home. ABC's M. Wen has the latest from Washington. Are you sure there are no more classified documents? The president under fire after a White House lawyer confirmed this weekend five more pages of classified information was discovered when Justice Department officials came to collect the one classified page found late last week at Biden's home in Wilmington, Delaware. Biden's attorney Richard Sauber claiming they acted immediately and voluntarily, though critics say Biden's team should have been more transparent with the public when the records were found. Typically when a security investigation is being conducted, uh, the details of that investigation are not disclosed. This is to protect national security. This is to ensure that potential witnesses uh, aren't influenced. This comes after other classified materials were found in the garage of his Wilmington residence and sources tell ABC about 10 classified documents were found in a think tank office Biden used after he was vice president. We want to know who had access uh, to the Biden Center for Diplomacy. Republicans on the House Oversight Committee also demanding visitors logs from the president's home. But today, the White House counsel's office implying those logs don't exist, saying consistent with past precedent of every president, Biden's personal residence is personal. Meanwhile, Democrats are pointing to significant differences between Biden and Trump's handling of classified materials, including how Biden's team immediately contacted the National Archives upon discovery, while Trump's lawyers refused to comply with investigators for months. But some Democrats want to know whether national security was jeopardized. We have asked for an assessment uh, in the intelligence community of the Mar-a-Lago documents. Uh, I think we ought to get that same assessment of the documents of President Biden. A special counsel has been appointed to investigate Biden's handling of classified documents, just as one was for Donald Trump. M1, ABC News, Washington. And we are taking a look at the intense aftermath of that severe weather hitting the West Coast. All the details right after the break. New South Window is Florida's factory direct window company. We stand behind our work on both our products and installation. One company, one call. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Get a bird's eye view of the Sun Coast with a Hyundai Live Cam Network. Go to MySunCoast.com for a live look at local landmarks from Inglewood to Anna Maria Island. See local beaches, sunsets, and more in real time. Only on the Hyundai Live Cam Network. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Elantra. Lease an Elantra for $249 a month or get 2.9% APR for 48 months or $750 bonus cash. See your local Hyundai dealer. I'm ready for love! I definitely blacked out. And not because of alcohol, because of love. There's more women coming on today's day. He knows what he wants. That sets apart a man from a boy. If I don't get a rose, I'm burning this house down. Help me, help me, help me. I was not expecting that. Hard work, striving for excellence, and a commitment to the communities we serve. These are the values that we practice every day at the law offices of Anajar and Levine. I'm Glenn Levine, a board-certified civil trial attorney who has been recognized by the Florida Bar as an expert in the field of civil trial. If you are involved in a legal dispute and are not sure of your options, call us at 1-800-747-FREE for a consultation and take back control of your life. Turn up that heater, folks. It's going to be a cold one out there today. Grab those jackets and stay <sighs> the warm. Heater's Let's working. head over to Brian with traffic. <laughs> hmm. time.
Or you don't. Pay a dime. I'll call one hour. Always on time, or you don't pay a dime. Just another ordinary day, right? What does yours look like? We don't often think about ordinary, everyday life until something comes along and keeps us from it. That's why we're here, to help make sure a health issue never gets in the way of you doing you. From routine health care to emergencies to all the little things in between, we're proud to be your local network of care, bringing comprehensive medical technology home to our community. Let's do well together. At New South, we understand Florida weather. That's why we design and make the ultimate Florida weather. Designed to keep the heat out and the cool air in, saving you money. And that's why we're... Well, there is finally a break on the horizon when it comes to the wicked weather lashing out on California. One more major atmospheric river system is moving through the state today, but by the end of the week, drying out, thankfully. Meantime, dramatic rescues have unfolded across the Golden State. Mike Valerio showing us the latest and has an update on conditions in the forecast over the next couple of days. Above the waters of a furious and quickly rising creek, a delicate and dramatic rescue in Southern California. A woman clinging to a tree, saved, hoisted high above the floodwaters and brought back to safer ground. On Sunday, south of Sacramento, rescuers on rafts, the National Guard helping to evacuate about 175 people from their mobile homes. It's a lake out there. I have beach front property. And with emergency teams only feet away, this road in Pescadero slides and collapses, careening down the hillside. We had levee breakages, mudslides, um, power outages, mass evacuation, school closures. Uh, it has been a very difficult time in the state of California. The National Weather Service says San Francisco already surpassed its yearly rainfall average eight months early. The good news in the days ahead. We're looking at the rest of the week, uh, a little bit of a reprieve and the ability to clean up and uh, hopefully get people back in their homes. Near hard hit Santa Cruz, a man installed this zip line, thinking the bridge connecting his isolated neighborhood would wash out. It did, and he zipped back and forth ever since. Well, you live in the woods, you know, you just kind of got to be prepared. We're a resilient group up here. We do have uh, seven households up here. Meantime, snow continues to pile up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Chains on tires, a must. I'm kind of wishing it would quit for a while. I'm tired of it. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio reporting. It's just like a freak of nature. Like, I, I have relatives. We all have friends and family in California. And the pictures they're sending, I'm like, it's like a hurricane over there it's, in California. It's, it's just so, it, you know, it's it's a semi-arid climate to begin with. So when you've got all that moisture coming in through uh, with the atmospheric river, it comes in and it then it hits dry. It rises. It dumps all of this rain on here. And you saw how they have this mudslide. You know, uh, portions of California, they lose a little bit of their land every year out there. So it's never good to see that. Uh, but fortunately, we don't have to deal with anything like that. And they will get some relief. As soon. So let's go ahead, take a look at what's going on around the United States with the watches and warnings and advisories. You see a little bit of green here when we talk about California. They're still under an aerial flood watch uh, through the central part and almost uh, down to uh, the Santa Barbara area there, and as well as their small craft advisories. We do have winter storm warnings that are still in effect, and you can see over here in the southwest uh, much of the Arizona area, parts of Utah as well as Nevada, and then uh, some fog issues up in the Montana area and then also some winter storm warnings up in the northeast as well as in Michigan and all around the Great Lakes as they're getting a lot of rain in that area. For Florida, we're actually looking pretty good in our area. We do have a rip current statement along the east coast and also near the panhandle, but look at us, no watches and warnings. We're very dry right now in the area. Uh, the temperatures are basically in the mid to low 50s at this point around the Sun Coast area. We're at 51 right now in Sarasota and you can see we're a little bit warmer inland at 58 in Arcadia, 56 in Wachula. So as we talk about tomorrow morning, when we say, you know, these overnight temperatures, we mean tomorrow morning, uh, right around daybreak, like around 7 a.m. That's usually when it's the coldest and we're expecting lows to be a little bit warmer than they were this morning. We saw temperatures in the 30s this morning, but look, 41 Mayaka City as I back up here, 43 Northport, 47 Inglewood, 46 Venice, 44 Sarasota tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. We're at about 46 in Bradenton, Longboat Key, 
Parish 48 and 50 in Anna Maria Island about 7 a.m. So again, our low is going to be 44 as we move up. We will hit the 70s, so that's good by 3 p.m. Our high should be 71. Taking a quick look here at the model, uh, the, the American model, we are going to have a front that starts to make its way towards our area on Thursday. This is a little bit different than the European model. The European model has us getting a little bit more rain on Thursday night into Friday, and you can see uh, this one not so much, so hopefully they'll get more in alignment. But Monday, definitely going to have uh, some of that rain coming through, about a 50% chance of rain on Monday and some slight chances uh, uh, earlier than that. Look at this. That's what we want to see. Touchdown Mike Evans from Tom Brady. That's what we're hoping tonight. We're getting closer to the kickoff. Of course, you can watch that Buccaneer Cowboy game right here on ABC 7 as they close out the wild card games. Again, the kickoff is going to be at 815. So if you have loved ones heading to the game, uh, it looks like we're going to be at 55 degrees at Raymond James Stadium for the kickoff halftime. We're now up to about 51 earlier. Uh, it was 49, so we're raising a little bit. But by the end of the game, you're probably going to be in the upper 40s. We're going have clear skies, hardly any wind at Ray J, so good conditions for the kickers. And again, clear skies, so just bundle up. Let's take a quick look at the seven day forecast now. It looks like, again, the high is going to be 71 tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of sunshine over the next several days. A little bit of clouds come in, as I told you, that weak front makes its way to, towards us. And then a 10% chance of rain, really Thursday late night and into Friday. And then we'll jump up to about 30% Saturday. Look at the lows. The lows will jump up to the 60s. We just got to deal with this 44 tomorrow morning. Then we'll get warm. Back to you guys. Ooh, that is cold. But could be worse. Okay, coming up. A creepy statue lurks at the bottom of a lake. And a foil dog theft inspires a half a million dollar donation. All that is coming up in tonight's Take a Look at This. The seven-day weather forecast is brought to you by the Gettle Automotive Group. Gettle's got it. The all-powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Lease a new 2023 Sportage LX for $279 a month. I was having some back problems, and my friend said to me, I've got the place for you to go. I looked around with Sandy, who does such a beautiful job of explaining and educating you. He really wants you to feel great when you wake up the next day. It's not a hard sell. It's an education. And at the end of the day, you're going to call me and thank me. here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. What can Sono Bello do for you? How about a new shape? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. New confidence. I can see a huge difference with this. New you. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. With Sonobello, you can permanently remove stubborn fat in just one visit. Don't wait. The results I've seen achieved are truly outstanding. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation with Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and find out how you can get $250 off. Sonobello uses TriSculpt Micro Laser Liposuction to remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently for incredible transformations in just one visit. I have one big regret. I didn't go sooner. Call 1 888 512 2013 or go to sonobello.com. The all powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Lease a new 2023 Sportage LX for $279 a month. First Alert Weather, sponsored by Covenant Roofing. The difference is the promise. The insurance companies are now coming down on people that have older roofs. So I felt, well, I'm going to beat them to the punch. So I went and I checked different roofing company quotes. Covenant Roofing was the best. The inspector came out and he said, who did your roof? He says, this is excellent, the way they did your roof. He's asking me. That made me even more happy to hear that. I, I picked a good company. I chose the right one. <laughs> 
A horror movie fan takes a deep dive with one of the genre's most iconic villains by burying a statue of him at the bottom of a lake. For 10 years, Jeremy Roth has tonight's Take a Look at This. A kooky hobbyist's creeptastic creation has become the stuff of local lake lurking legend. Minnesota electrician and amateur scuba diver Doug Klein's garage is loaded with oodles of artistic oddities, some of which often end up as sunken surreal treasures. But Klein's undisputed submarine masterpiece is a life-sized Jason Voorhees statue that's been buried in a watery grave in Lake Crosby for 10 years. I had all this stuff in my garage. I had two by fours, I had plywood, I had foam. I just decided, hey, I'm gonna build Jason. Klein and his diving buddy crafted and sunk the villain, a nod to the sixth Friday the 13th movie. And there it has remained for a decade. Viral vids of the sunken scary peculiarity have garnered scores of views and visits from divers from all over, taking the plunge to catch a glimpse of Jason. People just really enjoy it, and that, that makes me happy. Speaking of villains, a dastardly dog shelter heist has led to a groundswell of support in Michigan. Four rescue dogs were stolen during a caught-on-camera break-in at Detroit's Make a Difference Dog Shelter. Thankfully, quick combined efforts from police and community members saw all four dogs return safely. And that's not all. An anonymous supporter later made a $500,000 donation to the shelter, which is raising money to build a new and safer location for the animals. I just really want to thank everybody because it does take a village to come together. A scary scenario, a happy ending, and more hope on the horizon. I'm Jeremy Roth. That is all the time we have. Make sure you join us for ABC 7 News at 11. Until then, I'm Rick Adams. And I'm Marisa Lamison. For all of us here at ABC 7, have a great night.